This is Mabira Forest. A century ago, almost half of Uganda looked like this. But now, Mabira is one of the few remaining areas of protected forest left in the country. This rare resource has been at the centre of a battle between the government of Uganda and its people. A battle which goes right to the heart of Ugandan politics and whose implications are having a profound effect on the political landscape of the country. In December 2006, the government of Uganda announced a plan to degazette areas of the Mabira Forest Reserve and sell it off to the Nugadzi Sugar Company. The announcement was met with shock and indignation. Government <laughs> It stunned everybody that uh, the current government that evicted people from that forest in 1992 after realizing that the forest was important now comes up and says it's giving away the forest for agricultural production. The government's argument was that converting part of the forest to sugarcane was a good economic decision. Others were quick to dispute this. So we needed to come up with a study that would present to the decision makers that look, even though you are making a decision, an economic best decision to plant sugarcane in this forest, but this forest is also actually important economically, so we needed to put that uh, argument to death. The study showed that people living around the forest gain significant economic benefits from its resources. Nabanga <laughs> Local people and their supporters were also unconvinced by the suggestion that the sugar company would bring them great benefits. Ebi mo 
entalo na balimba era bwe bajja ebisera ebisinga ate bagoze sa chibiran bajja mu enku ne batunda ne basobola ogwe yemirirawo era ebisera abinje nje nyo baduka ne badde yong e wawe na retang abalala chimwe chira ne babera wonga beto abola bachu in addition to the economic argument, increasing numbers of people became alarmed at the abuse of the law that the president's decision represented. At constitution ya fe ya Uganda nunji nyo wajire ambi kaburu unji. Ntiburi muntu alimuchi nitu katinga fe tuji ya wabali nanyi chibira. Tuani wade tutukirirwa, batubuza, ne batubuza chitu gasachi, obayi miganyuro na china. Yete tuwa tukirirwa, tuwa ulira buulizi. To oppose the president's plans, Ugandan civil society groups joined hands to conduct a concerted campaign to stop the Mabira giveaway. So when I, I asked the government three times on the floor of parliament to explain to Ugandans why they are taking such a, such a shame, shaming decision as a government. And so if, when we couldn't get an, an answer, I fall out of, of parliament to the other stakeholders. We drew on uh, new tools of doing advocacy. Because previously we had not used uh, the cell phone. So using SMS text messages to reach a broad uh, a cross section of people was really a new tool for advocacy for us. The, the printing and distribution of bumper stickers on vehicles, we were able to, uh, to campaign for a boycott of Lugazi sugar. We opted to have a demonstration, a peaceful demonstration. They started tear gassing the, the, the demonstrators. It was a dark day in Kampala. But the message was loud and clear that government stand warned Mavira Forest will not just go. We shall defend it up to the end. With the Mavira campaign, we were able to, cons to build a coalition of a broad range of organizations that would ordinarily not be interested in environmental issues. Because we, we, we grew the coalition from the traditional environmental civil society organization, brought in the labor organizations, uh, brought in the churches, uh, brought in the democracy organizations, and brought in the traditional kingdoms, and brought in politicians. And so the coalition grew and became so big that it really threatened the very essence of the survival of the state. And I think that's why we were able to uh, get the president to, to reverse and change his, uh, his uh, position. Although the Mabira forest is still standing, the threat to Uganda's forests from commercial agriculture remains. And in other areas, it's proving even harder to hold back the tide. Bugala Island in Lake Victoria has been experiencing large-scale deforestation to make way for massive palm oil plantations. The company involved, Bidco, was also targeted by those who were fighting the Mabira campaign and has since withdrawn its claims to national forest land. However, privately owned forest land is proving to be a more vulnerable target. We are looking at a, a place which was once forested with natural trees but everything is now completely down. This has been cut down to pave way for creation of a palm plantation. The runoff from here is simply just going to go down into the lake. The forest captures the water, sends it to this swamp, and then from this swamp, the clean water goes into the lake. But now with this new development, Part of this ecosystem is going to be divided into two, and one of them is destined for total destruction. The loss of forest cover and the introduction of large-scale commercial agriculture is already having knock-on effects on the local environment. Tulina obwera lichirivu ngafe abakola omorimu guno goku voba. Bolirucha enyanja efunye enchuka chuka mbutonde buwayo. Chokulala bako lisanyo chemicals. Chemicals. 
akubweka tu katono nyoka kali ku kengizi weke na yo budde bonna batebereza bagenda kala chi kasala oredo akasimbe binazi kali no tulino bwera likirivu olwechi ukachuke genze jja mu bizinga bya sese pawe zifuwa ngirije kiri kizinga kati zijula kutwala muntu yenyeni zifuwa ne zikupa kula za galo kutwala muntu loku banti zisigadde kusebwa nsoze za ka nenga tuko kya libibira bisibachi bisibampeo kale no mutuze wo ku bitundu bino kujja ko yatalengera netu yitorekedde akasera akazibu in spite of these worries the company defends the palm oil project on the basis of the economic benefits that it will bring to the local people bidco will extract the oil from the uh, fruits and cooking oil will be processed and the country will get foreign exchange the people will eat oil and will look healthy the families will get income the workers like myself get employment and uh, that's the way it is however many local people question the reality of these benefits when compared to the value of the forest resources which they are losing Omuntu ono civilian ni pizza anti ngafwe mutulaba mu myalo ngajino tugenda kuyimirira wotu tya kubange sese omutigu bajja eliato enyumbe zisinga we wa wa ntwafuna mu kisanti tuline ko taka ne nyumbe zisinga ku myalo bogenzo ziraba bako zesemba awo okuzimba atinga tuzala tugenda kuba tujja masa kuliko kati wo boli tunda obo filidwa kinene emiti ejo ja bei nyo 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 atinga kina zitijja kuva mu rubawo tikigenda kuvwa mu kati ngafu abavuba amato tolina wojagajja kati mbawo kutuke kisera wajja kutuke miyaka nga 10 kati wachi ali jetujja mbawo za amato kati ngati tulina wetuenza kola fene tugani ile mitija fiji mu wejiri tujijiza abantu kati we bazimbisa kuba kati bali abe binaza abatunda tibache naje bajja ya doluko kali nze byo ne tugana ne uno kusingira dala cha bugagga cha fwe kubanga land kintu kikuru tonyiza gamanti omuntu otunde tako sigazi se dobogule moto naba mwa bagule moto kakati zafu za yono nyakata as well as challenging the argument that the scheme would provide economic benefits to the people both local people and campaigners have questioned the ethics and legality of the way in which the company acquired the forest land in the first place bawe buza ko Burundi ne mukiriza namwe ne mugamanti ebinazibigenda mu maso no nte chaliwo chaliwo government yajja eranga mu kunyonya dentu bwavu bwali mpatu nejja egure ttaka ku bantu nainge atira bagulu businto obuki okutone nyo era abantu nga bawayo buwi the land that has been put to the oil palm was purchased from private owners on a willing buyer willing seller basis and the idea that it is private forest land it is really a debatable issue because we know that uh, much of the forest of the palm oil plantation was established on private land but really the the use of the pri pri private land has been more or less like a vehicle for the company and the government to actually encroach on the protected forest estate. Much as forest on private land belongs to the private owners, its management should be subjected to the laws governing forestry. And for the private landowners in Bugala to give away their own land, which was originally covered by forest, I, I think that was an error. This is forest land. And if you are going to change it into another land use, you should find an alternative piece of land that has the same environmental values. They were convinced by politicians that palm oil production was better than keeping the trees uh, on, on their land. Comment here and about this. Nga katumu investor wa yajja. Nukusuka wa yajja. Bali baga ambi. Nti avanto wa lini taka. Tukolele wamu. Contradictions in the law have been identified as one of the key failures that have led to the current situation on Bugala Island. You have one law, the Land Act, which says land belongs to you in as long as you have a land title and that whatever is on that land belongs to you 
Then we have the NEMA statute, the Environment Management Statute, which says, much as the land is yours, much as the forest is yours, you should manage this according to the laws uh, governing environment and natural resources. But you find that the implementation and the enforcement of these laws is carried out by different institutions and different organizations. At the heart of both the Mabira and Bugala situations lies the question of governance, of who decides on the use and allocation of forest resources in Uganda, and on what basis they make their decisions. Where there is corruption, the resource can be destro destroyed very fast. To fight corruption or mismanagement or uh, um, bad governance, um, it is a concerted effort from all the stakeholders. The state looks at all these resources as resources you can give away at the leisure of the president or of the people in uh, political authority. Going forward, our campaign, even within the forest governance learning group, need to look at the issues beyond forest governance and look at those, uh, those uh, conditions, the democracy conditions that enable citizens to be able to come up and say, this is how we need our resources to be used. All this begs the question as to who is best placed to be making decisions about forests. Many communities are already successfully managing and investing in their own forests, and they hope to continue doing so into the future. You need to consult the stakeholders. We are all stakeholders. The government is stakeholder, taking laws and policies, making policies and whatever. But we are the implementer and we are the beneficiaries. So we have to make a partnership, all of us. And I think this thing is better in the whole of Uganda to use collaborative forest management because it is a partnership between all the stakeholders of the forest resources. In spite of ongoing efforts by the Forest Governance Learning Group and its partners, good forest governance remains elusive in Uganda, with much political interference in forest decision making. The team continues to work with those living around Uganda's forests to support them in putting pressure on government to make better and more transparent decisions on forest management and ownership.